Hi, everyone. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. We welcome you to this new edition of Regional Gender Economics Dialogue on the CARE Summit from the IAFI. This is part of a series of online events, online IAFI events. They are all recorded in the YouTube uh, channel so that you can access and follow references of different feminist economics issues. We invite you to visit the YouTube channel and to log into the IAFI website. And these are monthly conversations and very relevant to feminist economics. We are going to focus on this uh, third uh, care work uh, uh, dialogue. And for that, we have a, a very important guest today, Juliana Martinez Franzoni, which I'm going to tell you about today. My name is Stefania Tapia Marchina from the Technical University of Monterey in Mexico. And we are going to talk about a transversalization of our economics in our homes. Uh, Juliana Martinez is, uh, has a PhD in, sociolo in sociology from the University of Costa Rica, and she focuses on investigation in the global south. She focuses on a compared analysis of social politics in Latin America, including care politics. She's published several books and academic articles uh, for governments, civil societies, and international organizations. She is the editor of the feminist man, uh, magazine Social Politics, and her work has been very important in research. She is a pioneer in speaking of uh, economics, uh, feminist economics. So Juliana, it's a pleasure to have you here today. And I'd like to start the conversation by you talking about us, your research, what you'd like to say about care work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Estefania, for your generous words. Thank you so much, Ayafi, for this valuable and significant space. I am a researcher from Uruguay. I've been living in Costa Rica for many years, and I've dedicated myself to applied investigations. I orient towards conversation and joint work with uh, government, politicians, civil societies, and international organizations. And in my research agenda for several years, I've been working uh, on care work. And within that framework, it's been a great honor for me as a researcher, but also for my colleagues in the University of Costa Rica and other state universities where, who have hosted us for this event for the uh, care work for the Global South. It's a great honor uh, to be able to hold this uh, meeting that we are going to have from the 7th to the 9th of June, 2023. Originally, Stefania, we thought that this meeting was going to be held in 2021 and then came along the pandemic and so uh, we had to redefine our agenda uh, towards virtual communication and that's why we had to postpone the global meeting so that we could hold it uh, physically this year in 2023. Thank you so much, Juliana, along with uh, what has been uh, hosting this entire Congress, which is going to be translated simultaneously. And so it's going to address the relationships between the global North and global South care work policy. So I wanted to tell you about uh, what the Congress is going to be about, if you're going to tell us about this uh, work. Yeah, we, the instruction of this meeting is to build bridges and we have a lot of uncertainties but, and we have different answers to the different uncertainties and what better place than Latin America's to talk about 
differences and inequalities. It's an area that is completely unequal and very heterogeneous uh, regarding state intervention and care work, the degree of social protection that these labor markets uh, contribute to the population, a lot of policies and measures such as uh, things so basic as maternity leave, paternity leave. It's a very heterogeneous region as regards their political regimes. Uh, there is a lot of authoritarianism. Sorry, uh, there's a lot of authoritarianism in different regions. So it's, uh, it's a very interesting region to address and talk about care work. Also, the Care Work Network invited us to have this meeting in Latin America. And so the huge innovation that the region made in public policies on care work between the year 2005 to 2006 up to 2013, there were some times of pause and retraction and more difficult contexts to be able to move forward in the measure in the measures taken our region has a lot to show uh, from the state, as well as in conversation with civil societies, women civil societies and feminist movements from the region have been able to move forward in their agenda to put care work in the center of the lives, in the center of the population and the economies. Yes, and that's where I wanted to ask you, what players are going to participate in this meeting? Are we talking academics? Are we talking uh, officials, government officials, general population? Of course, the meeting is going to have 30 different panels and simultaneous sessions, uh, more traditional panels maybe with uh, drafting articles and such. And we also have six program six public dialogues where we are going to be listening to research on public policies and also claims from the population as regards care work. What this means is that we have an important participation from political activists and activists as a whole, such as domestic um, or house workers and also international organizations, home-based workers are going to participate, political organizations and also UN women, women from the Federation Frederick Ebert and also thanks to Oxfam uh, and Frederick Event is that we're going to be able to hold a physical bilingual event. The only thing that is not going to be bilingual is the uh, hall conversations. But we are building this idea of uh, building bridges, not just addressing the barriers, the language barriers, Spanish, English, the the most universal language that we use, of course, which is English, but also because we're addressing academic communities that have different cultures, different customs, different traditions. So communication is not just about language, it's about the way of approaching and building bridges between the different cultures, traditions, customs. Uh, this event has mobilized dozens of people it's completely, it's a completely voluntary meeting and the organization of this global event is based on great efforts made by so many people for such a long time. And so one of the things that caught our attention is the possibility of having great minds in one same room from academia and also from activism. I mentioned FEDS, I mentioned Oxfam, but we have the support of many universities from the global north, from Latin America, and also from several other UN organizations, such as the UNDP, UNICEF, 
uh, who have also provided great collaboration. And also the ILO has contributed. So thank you so much for all their efforts towards organizing this event and also for supporting the participation of people who have no political affiliations or people who needed support to be able to participate in the Congress. So you've done a great articulation uh, work. I imagine that that was exhausting and very difficult being two days from the conference. And so it's very important to have those uh, spaces. Um, I'm sure that uh, political activism and feminist activism are going to be happy to have this place to talk about care work, talk about care work in our region, in the global south, global north. And so I wanted to ask you from your work that you've analyzed, have you analyzed the redistribution of care work politics from the different states. How is it in Latin America? What's the budget like in Latin America? What public policies do you see in Latin America regarding care work and regarding this conference? How are we going to finance care work in that region? Well, we are facing hard times where there's a lot of uh, narrative regarding austerity and that care work is a problem and not a solution. And that's gained a lot of ground, a lot of terrain. So in the master uh, classes that we are going to hold in this global space, in these master conferences, uh, there we are going to address the marketing of care work. In that moment in which we thought that the pandemic, that we could redefine the rules of the game regarding care work as a central issue in the economy and in civil society. So we have one speaker who will be addressing this. And then we're going to have a great dialogue between people who see the reorganization of care work between the states and also among different people. And we're accepting people from the global north, the global south, but we're also hosting people from Africa. We have Crystal Simeone participating from the Nawi Collective, and we have Alejandra Mora from the uh, Secretary of the uh, Organization of American States, and she's going to be talking about policies in care work, and Julie Cashin from the Directive of Economic Justice from the Secretary Foundation, and we are going to talk with her about the challenges of care work and inequalities in care work due to social issues, economic issues in particular contexts. And we have the challenge of financing specifically and the priorities that the state give to care work, but not just in financing it, but it, who is going to finance care work. Latin America is a region with a regressive tax system and the more dynamic um, economic sector, uh, sectors are not participating and so they don't have enough uh, financial support. And care work is a political effort. Care work needs to be at the center of these decisions. And finally, the third lecture is going to be by Lorena Caminal from Community Feminism. She is a feminist from Guatemala and she's addressing these care work issues in a context that is particularly adverse for women, for care, and for all the different minorities in a very difficult political context happening in Guatemala, but how we can place care work at the center of life, at the center of these conversations. So we have a very broad variety of lectures to talk about where we are, but also where we want to be, because we want to diagnose and 
analyze and have criteria about where we think we should be as a society in the conversation regarding care work. Thank you very much, Juliana. I'd like to say that part of the feminist economy is to see how we organize ourselves for the social reproduction, not just for the exchange. So care is essential here. You're speaking about two very important issues. First of all, the regulations, what we need to legislate, what's still not in the international guidelines that will allow us to move forward. And then the fiscal policy seen from the care perspective and not from the one that is normally seen. Because in Mexico, for example, as you know, laws are very pretty sometimes, but the without the changes, the, it is impossible to implement them. Is it still at the center of the care work agenda, creating national care systems? Yes, I believe it is. And it is a very debatable, debated issue. Uh, from the feminist perspective, we both agree, we all agree that we need to reorganize care in order to go forward with inequalities, with to move. There is a great imbrication between gender inequality and class inequality that is then uh, also entangled with racial issues. Uh, and from a feminist perspective, that is unavoidable. The paths that allow us to do in a more effective way are heterogeneous. And this not only has to do with what is technically best, but also with the political economy of change. What is, What are the resources of power that we have to promote these changes, where the main vetoes come in order to promote those changes, and therefore also to have tools of public policies that are as capable as possible to deal with those vetoes and to construct wide broad coalitions in order to move forward. So it is not just to, um, we need to work on the national care systems. These are instruments and there may be other instruments in order to get to where we want to get in some countries, completing the school timetables to go to a full timetable have been prioritized to complete schemes of care of the elderly that are linked to the social welfare system. So to put different parts of the puzzle that eventually may be part of a system. And in other countries, in Uruguay, for example, they have created national care work systems and they, they have moved forward quite a bit. So we must keep completing the right tools for public policies and the specific way to do it depends greatly upon the countries, their features in the region. We have very, very small countries like Uruguay with 3 million inhabitants and Mexico and Brazil, which are huge and they are almost like continents. We have federal countries as well, where there is a lot of subnational differences and also not only territorial, ethnical, ethnic differences, but also political perspectives on how to move forward. And I think the specific way to do it depends on that. The realities are not heterogeneous. So the paths to get to this social reorganization of care won't be either. And I wanted to ask you with regards to the local, where you have also the focus of the organization. How do you see this from not the national level, but from the local, could be subnational governments or the self-management uh, community-based? I think the uh, agenda for incidents for care has been pioneer because the when we talk about social policy in a region, it is a quite centric, uh, state centric, and is quite focused on the national governments, whilst there is a whole agenda and recent literature when it comes to care, 
that is very much linked to transformations locally or even to big cities such as Medellin or M Mexico City that from those transformative experiences have also given rise to a critical mass with regards to these, an academic mass with regards to this. So I am very hopeful personally and collectively what we may be able to learn in the summit that we will have. We have noticed a lot of emphasis on um, speeches to do with care and the pandemic and care after the pandemic. We have also, uh, with regards to COVID, for example, we have two full sessions with regards to this, with care and COVID, social representation, reorganization of care, uh, different requests from the government, different issues that have to do with the echoes of the pandemic. There are 21 presentations that touch upon this subject. And there's also a lot of emphasis with regards to migratory dynamics and the changes in the organization of care. And in the third place, there is representation that don't have to do with the pandemic or with migration. With regards to these three knots, uh, there are many presentations that are focused on the different countries, on the subnational level, in the local level, we are preparing a paper with regards to what are the main knots of discussion and what are the convergences and divergences with regards to this global summit when it comes to the issues at hand. We want to see if we can find regular points between the way that different researchers from different institutional uh, and national and sub-regional levels move at these, look at these issues. This is something that we will share later on. Excellent news for everybody who will, won't be there, uh, that you will have this. I want to ask something that we get on the, uh, will these conferences be hybrid? We are doing them face to face, but they will be available immediately afterwards. So they will be able to be seen. And will we be able to look for that in the summit page, in the web page? Yes, I can share them. I can share that page. We will get Paulina to share them. Perfect. A decision that was very hard to take was whether the summit was just hybrid or in person, many people asked us to do it hybrid. And finally, we decided that it would only be in person because we felt that from 2019, we have not had a face-to-face -face meeting as a network, as a care work network. And we felt that that face-to-face meeting was essential and we're also making a very big financial effort in order to be able to have simultaneous interpretation and we considered the fact that the effort that many people do to come over made it so that we did not want it to be focusing on screens which is something that has happened in some of these hybrid conferences they facilitate access but on the other hand many times we end up in a room just a few people chatting with a screen so we decided that of course many people will not be able to attend due to this decision but it has the advantage of looking after this face-to-face -face meeting, which is so vital to articulate, to understand. As a network, we have been doing events from the beginning of the pandemic, virtual. And in fact, last year we had a symposium that was uh, online, but the idea is to alternate these two ways of meeting so that we can uh, attend to everybody's needs and requirements. As you were saying, face-to-face -face is still irreplaceable, especially the connection that happens informally when you're there after the conference, after the meeting, etc. 
And I'd like to go back again to the knots that you were mentioning, the issues. I'd want to ask, during the pandemic, we came back home and there was a regression when it comes to uh, the participation of women in the economic life, there was a potential because many people went back. So there was a, many men also went into the home and there was a reorganization, but we've seen actually the fact that things worsened this gender traditional roles. Um, so now in 2023, where we can officially say we are post pandemic, have we recovered from this um, gender role and from the cares that women take? What is your opinion? I believe that if I had to give a brief answer, no. Due to many reasons, especially due to transformations in the job market after the pandemic, there have been great changes. Uh, due to AI and the automati automatization of processes, things that we used to feel were science fiction are now a reality. And in the job markets where we are inserted, they are changing rapidly and they will change rapidly in the next few years and in the next few months even. So the post-pandemic, as you say, officially, this is the post-pandemic era, coexists with structural transformations that are very deep. And therefore, we have a lot to investigate and to understand. When the pandemic happened, what was interesting, what we actually experienced was the expectation that that shock would actually raise legacies and patterns and ways of doing things because there is literature that shows that pandemics and wars and these type of events that are capable of interrupting daily lives have the chance of generating a space for transformation. But that literature, which is history, also shows us that the space for transformation may be progressive or regressive. It could be positive or negative for pre-existing inequalities. And therefore, what we would be speaking about in, the, in this global summit, we're going to speak about the combination of positive and negative transformations. On the one hand, the enormous visibility of the importance of care, the fact that that narrative of the fact that these cares are th the basis of social life gained a path, but not for very long. And it was not necessarily expressed in transformations that are structural or institutional. And we're clearly not at the same position where we were before. And we need to look at whether the glass is half full or half empty. And it's going to be a homogenous, it's not going to be a homogenous balance in all regions. I think the devil is in the details in this case, the same as with many other cases. And one of the things that have uh, raised a lot of interest is to do with what is the transformation agenda? What should it be? How can we change things in the next few years when it comes to care, especially when it comes to public policy and care work? We can identify one or two channel challenges that are convergent that can raise an agenda between the different organizations, international organizations, governments or not, right? I, we're going to be able to tell you more about that later on. I think that, as we say in Mexico, the summit is strategic because it seeks to put on the table in a, in a way between all the different stakeholders to set an agenda, the key elements where we can move forward mid-term, short-term, when it comes to inequalities and that where we may have an influence on those transformations, we all realize that this is not a struggle for now. Uh, it is a transforming struggle that has taken generations and that is a great progress. If you allow me, Stephanie, to mention the fact that one of the indicators of the interest with regards to these 
subjects is that we initially felt that this was going to be 120 people that would attend and it's going to be 400, 240 people and it's just going to be that because at some point we had to say this is because 100 people more wanted to be this is how we felt we had to limit the amount of people due to logistics due to simultaneous interpretation due to guaranteeing a space for listening and so we didn't feel that because we go to one session, we're missing out on the others. But we were really amazed. We were amazed about the response and the reaction because there was a reaction of a lot of emotion and interest of a lot of different types of organizations, donor organizations that immediately wanted to support us to civil society organizations that are working locally or nationally with this agenda. And I believe that a lot of the emotion was to do with this summit among researchers and people who are transforming things in daily. Although in North America, there is also this very strong connection. In Latin America, I would say it's a lot stronger because many of the people and the colleagues who are writing articles and books and who have set out the agenda in this issue. I'm thinking about Nieves Rico, Laura Patasi, Flavia Marco, Liza Bramo, and so many other women. These women have been pioneers in, in academ academia and in the transformation when it comes to institutions and policies. So I believe our region is particularly keen to have many interests and to to participate between generating knowledge more academic and the application of that knowledge. I believe that is one of the plausible explanations of why it has been so well received and welcomed. And I believe one of the things that we incorporated with many colleagues of the network was for the first time to grant awards that will be given within the summit for organizations and for people who have changed the conversation when it comes to care work in North America, in the global South and in other parts of the global North and also organizations that with their practices are transforming the sexual division of labor and the way work care work is organized. And there's also gonna be an award for a pioneer when it comes to leading this network and the organization that allows us to gather people who are interested in these type of issues. That's also going to be very important because it helps people become aware of these efforts that many times these people have been working without uh, people seeing them to live in a kinder world. So it's important to acknowledge the people who are leading the transformation. They are a great part of the changes in public agenda that allow us to have gatherings like these. So that's why I wanted to maybe start closing up now to go to some uh, questions that the public wants to ask. I don't know if you have any closing remarks or final remarks regards the, the conference. Well, I think that this conference is the great, implies the great effort of dozens of people, dozens of initiatives. I love that we are organizing this meeting coherently uh, based on care work and nobody has died trying in the organization. We've tried to respect the time and everything that each organization can contribute. It's been a great effort, but it's truly been a pleasure to share, to contribute. Um, I think it's very coherent with the way that we'd like care work to be organized with no great, great, tremendous efforts, no extra time, feeling like we have to work four shifts in a day. Um, 
that's why the leaders of this organization approached me in 2019. In 2019, I was a lecturer in the last global conference that we had. I closed the event with a, a master lecture in, based on care work in Latin America in comparison to other parts of the world. Latin America has very uh, has very specific traits regarding care work. We started talking about paid, uh, how how house based home based workers should be paid, and uh, how there are many specific traits in this region, and that the success of change doesn't just regard public policies, but the order in which you deploy deploy these uh, public policies in order to truly drive the change. So when I was presenting my ideas, the colleagues from the network wanted to ask me if we could host the next um, event here in Costa Rica, especially because of the uh, inclusive uh, uh, socialist policies that we have here. And also, because we are sort of in the middle of the global north and global south, um, and the main reason why I didn't hesitate to offer Costa Rica as the hosting country is because I loved the collaboration. I love the way in which everything is done collaboratively. And so that's why I said, of course, this is something that we would gladly host. And I wanted to acknowledge this because uh, this is because of the great commitment that the researchers have with this work agenda. It's a job, it's a profession, but it's also a passion and a conviction to work towards this agenda. I think that everything has to do with how we understand care work, the times needed for care work, and that it's a social movement and the ethics involved. Um, it's a practice that we need to start implementing it on, in our everyday lives. It's not only cultural, it's essential that we have these gatherings where it's important that this is a social stability agenda and that we need to move forward strategically in order to move from this great crisis that we have on, on care work in many different markets around the world that threaten stability. So I just very quickly wanted to add that one of the objectives that we had in this meeting is to articulate people who are working on care work in Costa Rica. So many people from different care work organizations in Costa Rica are going to attend the conference, people from universities, people who work, who teach, regarding care work and my colleagues are going to host three workshops regarding time and gender relationships in order to uh, create awareness among the different communities like young women, the youth, different organizations regarding these issues. They have already had seven workshops. Three workshops are going to be in the conference and then there are going to be some other post uh, workshops after the conference and they had such great energy and they had such great reception by the public that uh, they've been able to grow beyond the global meeting. The global meeting is just the tip of the iceberg. There have been many things happening behind the stage and I'm sure that after these three days of work that we have, we are also going to keep working towards uh, care work. These three days of work are just going to strengthen our efforts that we have been working on up to here, and it's going to pave the path to what we need to continue doing after the conference. 
completely. I think it's just the tip of the iceberg. You couldn't have said it better. So now I'm going to open up the floor for questions from the public. So if anyone here has any uh, remarks or questions that they'd like to have, a hat like to make, you have the floor. Uh, I'm displaying my screen so that I can see the participants. You can also make questions in the chat regarding what was said here or regarding any issue on care work that you may have. In the meantime, my third example that I can't stop sharing is the Claxo group effort on care work. Claxo has been essential in Latin America, it's a network of centers. It's a network of network of research centers. And the gender and care work group has been very important in Latin America, led by Karina Batiani and several other colleagues in the last years, they've made great efforts to uh, bring researchers together, working together on care work. And um, something very positive that we've achieved for this global meeting is that the Claxo group could meet in Costa Rica this Wednesday before beginning the global meeting. Claxo has supported us in everything that had to do with dissemination and what's going to happen of these three days. So this is an example of how we can create synergy among different people and that all of them contribute ideas, processes. Yes, in Latin America, there are many colleagues and researchers and the Claxo network has been very important. I had the opportunity to do my specialization in the University of Claxo and it's it's significant, the work and the effort that they do, uh, also working with Corina Rodriguez, who is present here today, Lourdes, who is also here. She's a great researcher from the region, especially in care work and globalization and development and women. So Latin America is the place definitely to have uh, these meetings and these articulations and so we don't have any questions on the floor. So I wanted to ask you, what's next for Latin America? If you could say, if you could mention one crucial thing that you're going to do to move the agenda forward. I would say democracy, because we're talking about Central America. Central America has been a region that has lost uh, democratic spaces in Latin America due to authoritarianism. I think that due to authoritarianism, such as in Nicaragua or in El Salvador, also in Guatemala with threats to freedom of expression, threats to civil society, threats to activism. The first thing that is going to happen is that the main demands from feminism are going to be affected due to the lack of absence of democracy. Democracy is not just enough for the transformation, but it is necessary so that the different voices can express themselves and make space. And this has very, uh, very important consequences. We're in a, a period of political transition, which is very valuable towards this region. And we're going from democracy that are completely imperfect, but democracies to processes of democratization of power relationships. So I'd say that's a macro political challenge and we need to acknowledge that this is happening in our region so that we can maintain the necessary conditions for transformation in countries where we've seen authoritarian 
uh, efforts, authoritarian, authoritarian advancement, we can see that there, uh, we can see that the gender relationships are starting to be more traditional, retraditionalization of gender relationships, the sexual division of labor, the gender division of labor, different voices that can demand the, these changes are going to be affected due to authoritarianism. You are mentioning power and power resources uh, to foster the agenda. And of course, that there needs to be a space for different voices from democratization. And so here, I'm asking a question as regarding uh, linking a question to a, a question we have in the chat. To what degree will indigenous voices be involved at the summit? We're very interested in the presence of Lorena Cameal. She is a feminist voice, a community voice, and an indigenous voice as well. And she will be speaking from Guatemala in an adverse context. Uh, it's going to actually be, it's sometimes she's facing threats to her uh, physical well-being. We're interested in listening to her perspective on care work and well-being and from a different tradition, different than the academic perspective and the paper's perspective. Um, and so by listening to her voice and with her participation, uh, I think that we can grow and we're also going to have the opportunity to listen to many more uh, fascinating indigenous women. So I think that that's going to be a very valuable contribution. We're also going to have speakers from the Andean region and other Latin American regions that are going to give us a perspective on heterogeneity. As I was saying, this is a region that is very unequal and diverse and the gender, class, and ethnics are the three main areas that are going to create different structural contexts for the organization of care work. And also we're gonna have perspectives on what would be a better way or how we should move forwards towards transformation. So we hope that this global summit is going to leave us many takeaways to understand this diversity, the different uh, perspectives. So then I truly appreciate your openness, willingness, clarity in explaining all this process. And of course, congratulate you and the entire team uh, uh, because I think that uh, we'd like to thank you for all your interpretation and we love the Latin American community and so thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge and this is going to be in the YouTube channel so check the website uh, and I'm sure that you're going to have the recordings of the master lectures and we hope to continue with the conversation that care work is something essential uh, for the development and let's continue working. Stefania, before uh, saying goodbye, I'd like to thank you for this space and also like to thank all the uh, young women who are making a difference in this conversation. Uh, a conversation that really generated concern when we were organizing the summit, we wanted the summit to reflect the huge diversity regarding gen the different generations. And we wanted to show the new voices that we have in this uh, arena. Because when we organized the panels and the chairs that are leading the master lectures, we have great uh variety and diversity. This is not just for one type 
of, of network, but there is a great diversity and a great array of issues and voices to listen to. And so we truly have an explosion of academic production, of activism, and we have a completely new generation that is leading conversation, leading care work, and leading change. So I truly wanted to thank this and highlight this that is so valuable to move forward in our agenda. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juliana. Uh, without a doubt, the generation chain is changing and the main dialogue and the different voices that are intersectional is also very important and it's part of the ethic and feminist practice. Thank you so much for the audience being present today. Thank you so much for all of you who are watching us on YouTube now. Uh, please help us share and disseminate such an important work. And we hope that you have a great day.